Uh, my name is Yakov Selkowitz. Thank you for joining today. I am an engineer with Red Hat, and I'm involved in Fedora in a number of different capacities. My main responsibility is R and ELN to help us get ready for RHEL 10, as well as helping with Flatpaks, which I'll discuss today, and that has taken me into a bunch of different areas as well. And you've probably, if you're maintaining a package, you may have seen me file a PR sometime in the last while. I started with Fedora about 12 years ago. I think it was Fedora 14, um, coming from the Sigwin community, where I and then joined Red Hat a couple of years later. It's been about nine and a half years now. And today we're going to talk about flat packs without modules. This is a change that was introduced in Fedora 39. And I'll go ahead and get started. A quick recap of flat packs in general. Flat packs are containerized desktop applications. So they are for they're they're intended for graphical applications that are on your desktop. Um, and while they are of particular importance for the immutable or atomic desktops that we have nowadays, they are also just as usable on your traditional workstation or KDE plasma spin or the other traditional RPM DNF installations as well. They provide a, a number of advantages in, in both cases. They work across distributions and, and versions. so. You, because they come with the, their own runtimes, they are containerized. And so they're not dependent on the exact distribution and version that you're running underneath because they, co they, they come with their own runtime that, that provides all that. The, compa the uh, compatibility is, needs to be there at the kernel level. But generally speaking, that's, that's not often as you can run, for example, a modern flat pack on RHEL even though there's, you know, a couple of years distance between them in terms of, uh, of versions and so on. So the, uh, the one that uh, isolates uh, things is that well as well. It also provides a sandboxing and permission model that you cannot get with your traditional inst installation. And that while the, the kind of the default permissions of each app are defined by the app when it's built, they are actually adjustable and there are apps that allow you to adjust those permissions, add or take away those permissions and um, do those as well. So that provides a very important you know, model for, that we see also in nowadays in mobile apps and so on. This brings that kind of permission model to, to uh, Linux desktops in a way that was not possible before. It also allows multiple forms of, of installation. You can have a system installation, as you typically see with um, a distribution package, and also allows a, a user to install their own packages or their own versions of, of, of a flat pack separate from those on the system, either parallel to those on the system or even or instead of those on the system. There isn't one even. And it gives you that flexibility to, to adjust the... Um, how you install as well. And that's, again, that's something that you don't get from an from RPM. You can't really locally in, install it. You know, if you install an RPM, you've got to install it to the system. You have to have the rights to install it to the system and so on. This gives you some flexibility in terms of how and where to install it as well. So flatbacks consist of two parts. There's a, as I mentioned, the runtime, which are the, the, the base dependencies that every, or that most apps of that type will, will use and that provides that infrastructure. And then there is the, the, the parts that are specific to that, to that individual application. And they're tied together. An application says, I depend on this particular runtime, this particular branch of a runtime. So right now, most of our Fedora Flatpaks are using a Fedora 39 runtime. And we have a few because we have those that are primarily intended for, for GNOME apps and then those for or intended for KDE apps. And so we have a couple of runtimes if I'm a KDE app, I'm saying I'm going to depend on the KDE Fedora 39 runtime, and that will update itself periodically because we keep that up to date. But that app is a separate thing and goes on top of that on that runtime. The the way Flatpaks work is there's an isolation between the the two images that the runtime images, which in Fedora they're built from 
the same RPMs that are like that you would install on your system. Those go into the user prefix, and the application packages are rebuilt to go into the app prefix, and those those can only be in, in, in the app prefix. And that keeps them the, the two separate. That doesn't mean we have to rebuild the the packages that go into apps that are not part of runtimes, but this is the model that, that Flatpaks used to provide the isolation between the application and the runtime. And every, so every Flatpak only includes the pieces that are specific to that application that are not part of the runtimes. That's Flatpaks in general and a little bit of how we do in Fedora. Now, Fedora Flatpaks have a long history. It started about five years ago in Fedora 29. I was not involved then. Owen Taylor and Helen Lambert have been involved for quite a, quite a while. I'm a, I'm a recent newcomer, relatively speaking. I used to go back for about five years from Fedora 29. And when we were, they were originally created, they, they were based on modularity. We'll give it, get back to that in a minute. You can see on the right, on this chart, it shows the progression of of flat packs, the number of flat packs we provided in Fedora from the beginning until the last release. Now, in Fedora 39, we already have most of the flat packs we had going into by the end of 38. Most of those are already available for 39. There are more coming. We do have about a dozen or so that we need to that are still need to be caught up to Fedora 39. But um, these numbers actually are the kind of the end of the release. So. When we finished building flatpacks for Fedora 38 and we switched focus to 39, we left off about 300 flatpacks. And we we're picking up from there. And by the time we're done Fedora 39, I expect that number to be much, much higher. Um, but we're, we're, so that's why the, it's on the list. It's, the number, we're, we're still there at this point. But um, you see, there's a, a big progression. I joined during the, the flatpack effort during Fedora 37. And you'll see with extra hands on deck um, that helped us dump that number considerably, and it's you know gone up where since then. And I expect that by the by the time we're done Fedora 39, that number will be much much higher. So I mentioned we that when Flatpak started, and 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 until Fedora and through Fedora 38, it was all based on modularity. A lot of this predates my time, but the, you know, the question is why, well, why did we do modularity? Well, back in 2018, that was, modularity was a big thing. We thought that modularity was going to be a major, have a major impact on, on, on packaging going forward. Obviously they didn't come to fruition. And so we're changing course. It did allow for certain things that typically an RPM builds, um, didn't wasn't necessarily out of the box, but we found other ways to do those things, and so modularity became less less important to the effort, and never really caught on in the first place. So we have we've changed course, and and the reason we've changed course is the reasons why we're moving away. One of the big things against modularity was frankly it required a lot of infrastructure, and so we had to have a whole service, the modular build, build service, just to build the packages that would go into our flat packs and even to build the runtimes, we had to build a module. We didn't have to, we don't rebuild the packages, but just to, to build the, 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 we had to build a module just to build a, a, a runtime, even though we weren't really building RPMs for that. And so that that's a lot of overhead. And then we, the way we were building the, the containers, because that's how we ship flat packs in Fedora is we, we make them into a container, we ship the container and then Flatpak imports those those OCI containers into the system and and integrates them into the Flatpak system there. So to build those containers, we were using OSBS. And OSBS version one, which is what we've been using, is based on OpenShift 3.11. That is coming to its end of support if it hasn't already. And to you know the the amount of, again that's that that requires a whole cluster per architecture. And so adding architectures. It was difficult maintaining that. A lot of overhead and infrastructure required to, to maintain this path that we've kind of been able. We're, we're going to be able to get rid of, to get rid of um, through the new the new way we're doing things. For packagers, also, it 
well, there was overhead as well for them because you had to write a module empty. And there was a there there is a tool that allows you to do that kind of speeds up the process, but you had to you still had to know how to deal with it. You also had to know how to order your dependencies yourself because that the tool that wrote the module empty for you would give you the packages that you require, but it wouldn't tell you how to the dependency order of them. And so you'd have to go figure out that yourself. And that was sometimes a trial and error an, an error effort. You'd build the module, then you tried building the, the Flatpak container and find out that no, it didn't work because of something else. So then you have to go back and re try rebuild, um, rebuilding the module with some adjustments and then rebuild the container and so on. It, again, lots of overhead for, for both release engineering infrastructure as well as for developers. It also was hard to build locally to, for testing purposes. Because there, you had the, you had that module build, build service in the way, and there there was a way to do it, but it was a little hackish, and tricky. Um, so eventually, we found out that I found out, but we, we we discovered that there are ways to do some of the the things that we need modular to do in terms of handling like handling options and separating from the regular RPM builds. So we obviously don't want to interrupt those. We were able to find ways of doing this with some creative creation of Koji tags and to to tag options and so on. And so we found there was a, a easier, simpler way to do this. And that brings us to this, the change in Fedora 39. What, what, what did we do in Fedora 39? We, what's really came, it comes down to a few things. Flatpak module tools was rewritten. Now that, that is, that was a, that was a tool that we were building with until now, and we're still using it. And yes, it's still called module. <laughs> it's still in the name. We didn't rename it. Naming things is hard. There's also some common code in between them because we couldn't, we're not quite ready to, to get rid of build stuff yet until we've closed it out. So we didn't we didn't make a whole new thing. We just kind of rewrote re what we had. And I said, we were mostly Owen. Um, and so we, we, yeah, it's the same name, but it was, there's a, a considerable jump in version number and to reflect the change in the code that involves all of these changes. So you inst Fedora Flatpak module tools, which has the Flatpak module command line in it, is the, the kind of the main driver for developers and also is used on the, in the infrastructure as well. The The other main addition to Fedora 39 is the Koji Flatpak, which is a Koji plugin. It's not something you run on your system, but it's used in Fedora infrastructure to do all of the building stuff in Koji. Therefore, no more module build service, no more OSBS. Everything happens in Koji, and the Koji Flatpak plugin is what enables that. And then we, we've added a whole bunch of Koji tags, targets, and disk tags. These are the hierarchies. It's just the base names of, of all of them. There's obviously sub tags and so on. It's all structured to support this, but in Koji, that's not a big deal. Um, so we have Fedora 39, that name will presumably continue in future versions. We have a runtime tag, tag hierarchy, a app tag hierarchy, and then the Flatpak hierarchy itself is where the, where the actual Flatpak builds go. The runtime hierarchy is for certain things we need to add to the runtimes um, and to the, to the app builder as well. Things go there. It's just really a handful of packages. Those packages have a specific disk tag. The bulk of what you'll see is the Flatpak app builds, and those are builds of Fedora content, same spec files that used to build RPMs, but then built in these tags with a special um, disk tag, and they're built into the app prefix. And when you use the prop, when you properly use installation path macros in your spec file, it's very easy for the, the prefix to be changed in that way and for the builds to so continue. And when you don't, you usually get a PR for me saying, fix flat pad build. And I've set up for you. And then we have the flat packs itself go into the final tag. And that's where, and those are the little ones that actually get shipped as updates and released um, through our flat pack channels. So this is the, the kind of, of what we've what we accomplished in Fedora 39 and what's, um, what we actually changed, if you will. What does that gain? What do we gain from this all? A lot of change. What do we gain from it all? If you're just using Fedora Flatpaks, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference because at the end of the day, 
yeah, your flat packs are, are Fedora 39 content. You would have expected that anyway. That would have happened either way. Not a huge amount of change. One minor benefit that you do get, though, is deduplication. Well, with flat packs, you have to you download the entire thing because we ship flat packs as containers in Fedora. But when you when flat pack downloads it, it then deduplicates on disk. So when you have a commonly used dependency that's not part of a runtime, for example, boost, commonly used library, various things use it, it's not included in the runtimes. And our runtimes are, are based on communities, run, flat pack runtimes. We try to have a certain degree of, of, of equivalency there, although it's not exact for various reasons. But boost is an example of something that's that's widely used, but but not part of a runtime. In previously, you'd have to have a separate build for every module, or or in some case, we, we, thing like Boost, we actually had common modules. But every mo every common module had had to have a match the runtime. So we ended up still ended up having two or three builds of Boost at a minimum. And sometimes we had many more than that of the same package built in different modules. Well, now every every package is built once. For flat packs and all flat packs use that same build and so when you download multiple apps that use the same dependency like boost or like the game support libraries that both gnome and kde have you get the exact same bits literally it is the, it is the same package built in uh, on koji into the into the flat pack ta app tags and they all include it so they, they will do duplicate they are literally, literally the same bits and so that is one thing that you'll see, as, you may see as users, that it takes things take a little, a little less space. Another thing we we're able to add that we weren't able, well, that would have been difficult to do before because of the requirements of OSBS, is to add an architecture. We were able to add Power Little Endian um, to match the art, so that we have now x86, 64, AR64, and now Power Little Endian. That matches the architectures which, which we provide, Silver Blue and Kino White. And so we have. Matching matching architecture support there, that would have you know on Koji with since now in Fedora 39 we're we're just using Koji that's straightforward. Before that would have required having the infrastructure to set up an entire OpenShift cluster with OSBS and that would have, that was difficult. So that, that's something that was it was an easy win for us as part of the switch. For our friends in release engineering and infrastructure, you already know <laughs> this, but this is this is so much easier. And for them, and this is much less overhead, and we're re we're even going to be able to start um, decommissioning some stuff that we were the main or la were last remaining users of. Um, in fact, OSBS is on its last days probably until we just got to wrap up some things, and they're, they're already looking to pull the plug on that. So, for them, they are. I not not to speak for them, for everything I heard from them, they are very much enjoying um, this as well. For packages, this is where you see the, the biggest gains, is it is so much simpler to package flat packs now that we that we have this the, the modularity out of the way. You have one file. It's a container.yaml file. It is small, you'll see it in a moment. Very straightforward, self-included. You don't have the whole module MD. Dependencies are taken care of for you by the Flatpak module tools. You don't have to list out every single dependency and figure out the dependency order yourself. We have a depth chaser that includes that takes care of that for you. We also don't have to deal with this, having to make empty commits just to bump the modules so that module build service will then rebuild it. You don't have to do that. Container YAML, you, you literally could leave the container to YAML untouched for six months between, you know, for, for each release. And even though you're updating the RPM all the time, container IAML will still pick up the newest packages. You don't have to, to bump co bump commits or have empty commits in this case. Just just keep using it. In Koji, things are, are separated better. They're list packages, quote unquote packages, flat pack packages, if you will, which are kind of objects. Um, they're listed separately. They are in so for example, if you have GHEX as an app, just take a simple example. Before you used to have a GX RPM, a GHEX modular RPM, then you had a GHEX module, and then you had a GX flat pack, all of which showed up in the GHEX quote unquote package in Koji. Now 
you don't have half of that. You have the regular RPM and the modular RPM. They're both part of that. They're both builds of the same package. And then you have a G hex dash flat pack, quote unquote package in Koji. That's where the flat pack builds go. So it clutters things less. Also, those builds have meaning, meaningful version numbers now. Rather than having a modular version number of 38, 20, 23, 01, whatever, a whole D stamp appended to it, which shows you which version is based, which version of Fedora is based on, which when it was built, but it doesn't tell you what version of the app is in that flat pack build. Now, the the version of the quote unquote main package in the flat pack is the version of the flat pack. And so you can actually see, oh, this flat pack has this version of the app in it. But, it's, it's a little more visible and, and so on. Things are faster, so we don't have so much overhead. We've talked about shared dependencies already. That that also makes things easier for packages. Local bids are, are also easier because we don't have module builds the rest of the way. And when we need to intervene and kind of build things step by step or, or build package manually, we can do that. We're not restrained by having to build things through the modules. While Flatpak module tools does make it a lot simpler, sometimes some handholding is necessary, bootstrapping things like Perl, for instance, that for bootstrapping was Perl for, for, for Flatpaks definitely required some, like uh, some intervention, like most bootstrapping things do, we're able to, to do that and then everyone can use that content and we'll mention what we get from that later. So, a lot of time, not a lot of time left, but let me do a quick demonstration of what this looks like in action. I'm going to switch screens in a moment here. So bear with me for a moment. And okay. Okay. So what does it look like for flatback? For the sake of flat packs. I'm going to take this example of an app called Minder, and I just discovered this yesterday. I'll make a directory. It doesn't matter what the directory is called, by the way, at this stage. Um, later, you'll want to have a, have a sensible name, but um, unlike with with modules, the, the directory name doesn't actually matter at this stage. So I'm going to do a thing here, and I'm going to let... Um, Flathub, you know, this, this is an app that's on, that's on Flathub, and I want to say, oh, I want, we have, but we also have it on Fedora, and I want to have a Fedora flat pack out of it. So I can use the information from Flathub, including things like permissions and so on, to create, to automatically create the container.yaml in, um, for Fedora. Now you'll see here that it says, oh, you got to be a little more specific about um, your app name, because that wasn't quite enough. Now, and that's not a surprise because I've walked through this. Try this again, and container name. I will say that, by the way, that the flatback module init command is currently in testing, so it's you, you don't you don't have access to it today unless you're using the, um, the pull request. But hopefully, it will be something that we get to everybody soon because it makes this this step so much simpler when you already have an application on a flatback hub. Um, and they use it as a model, so. This is the container YAML. This defines, and this is all that we need to define the creation of the flatback for Fedora. And it has the ID, which is how we how all flatbacks are referred to by uh, uh, an ID in that of that form. Tell it which runtime we're using, which packages that we're including in the flatback, and then we tell it how to you know what how to start the flatback and and how to run it, in other words, and the permissions that this flatback needs. Everything looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Pack module, build RPMs local auto. I'll get this started and I'll then I'll explain what's going on just in the interest of time. So what does it do? As we mentioned before that it takes care of dependencies for you. I, all I need to say is I want the minder package to go into my flat pack. Flatback module tools includes a depth chaser that says, okay, you want my you want the minder package. Well, the minder package has all these dependencies. Now, the dependencies that are in the runtime, I don't need to worry about. The runtime provides this. I've already specified which runtime I'm using that provides dependencies. There are, however, in this particular package, and in many cases, a few 
dependencies that are not part of a runtime. They're not used widely, but this some this package or a few packages will use it. it doesn't justify inclusion in the runtime, but it is used. You will see how already, however, that these have already been built for the benefit of other runtimes. We already have these packages built, and therefore I don't need to build them again. It'll use the builds that are already there in Koji. Uh, what I'm doing here is a local build of just the piece that, that's missing and right now is the Minder app. And it's it, the Flatpak module tools, when you do those local builds, and like it does on Koji, uses mock builds to create. Um, there are, they are RPM builds, but they're RPM builds with the app prefix and certain other things modified with, with macros to make sure that they conform to Flatpak um, requirements. And so it's right now doing a local mock build of Minder in the, with an app prefix and so on with all the requirements of the Flatpak app. Doing that, it'll just take a, a minute or two. But you see, it's, it's Flatpak module tools is doing a lot of the work for me already. Um, and this will just take a one more minute, hopefully. Oh, I think we're just about done. Of course, when I was preparing this, it seemed to take a little. <laughs> it seemed to be a little shorter. <laughs> Always takes a little longer <laughs> when it's uh, when it's live, right? This is not a, this is not a, not a large package, which so should be done fairly quickly. Um, I do see that we're running short on time, so I'm going to try to cut this really short for this. And there we go. The RPM build is um, finishing up and it's cleaning up the build. And those of you who have done live demos before will know how that's like. I'm going to build a container. I, I don't know if I'll have time to finish this, but um, it's going to now it's going to do a local install of the container. Basically, and, you know, takes out those packages, installs it into a, into a mock root, takes only the stuff that's an app, and then Packages it up into a, we'll see a container. Then the dash dash install will actually go ahead and do a separate step to install it on my system. I could then run that, see that it's working, submit it. I'm going to have to cut that out of the demo because I'm running out of time. But this is this is really how simple it can be to to make a flat pack in for, for Fedora. So um, I'm going to have to, in the interest of time, I'm going to have to cut this short and go back to. Slide deck, I'm just about done here. Um, again, I'm not going to read it out on time, but there's, there's um, a lot more apps that can be built now in Fedora 39 that we weren't able to do before. And there's more stuff coming, so stay tuned. We're going to keep lowering the bar to make this easier and easier for people to contribute Fedora flat packs um, to Fedora and to really grow that base so that we can provide this um, these to, um, to all of you with um, um, with what we expect from uh, Fedora, Fedora content. So I don't know if there's much time left, but um, we a little over, but um, thank you for listening. And I don't know if we, if we have time, I'll take questions, but I do realize we're running a little late. Thanks so much, Yakov.
I think we can squeeze in a little bit of time for some questions. We have three in the Q&A tab, so I think we can just do a quick run through on those. The first one is from Neil Gampa. Do we now have good tooling for building flat pack artifacts locally before submitting to Koji? Yes, and that's the the demo was basically well, maybe 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 that question went up before the demo, but the yes, it is very easy to do a local build. If you can do a mock build locally, um, you can do a Fedora um, flatback module build. Module with a tool, flatback module tool. Do local builds is very straightforward. No hacks required. Um, I do this all the time, and the one caveat at the moment is that it, the package doesn't already need to be imported into Koji. I mean, it's already kind of be in Fedora as an RPM, and then you can do it. There is a, right now there is a dependency on having that there. Being able to do this before before the package exists in in Fedora and RPMs is something we'll, we'll need to work on. But our packages already exist in Fedora, as you see that it's very very straightforward local builds. And a follow-up question from Neil: Would we be able to build Risk Five flat packs? We don't have the infrastructure for that at this time um, because Risk Five is not part of Koji. I guess and I would have to defer that question to those who are dealing with Risk Five Koji in terms of that. In terms of local builds of an architecture that are not supported, um, I hadn't thought of that question. It's a good question. I would have to would have to have a discussion in terms of what's possible to do locally when. On an architecture that isn't supported, um, it's a good question. I don't have an answer at this time, but well, I'd be happy to discuss it in channel. Sure. And then our last question comes from Michael Gruber: How can we deal with different library versions which are not in the runtime? Such as, is there a way to bundle in the flat pack without bundling in the RPM to different library versions? I'm not quite sure I got the question, but Fedora flatbacks are built from RPM content. There's, the, you, as you see, that there is no, there are no means to build something only in a flatpak like the flatback builder. Um, we see that as an advantage; it brings quality to um, to Fedora flatbacks that you don't necessarily get on FlatHub, but. In terms of picking a specific version of a dependency for a flat pack, we can we can do that on across the versions of, across all the flat packs in a particular version of, of Fedora. We could do that. Um, I don't know that we have the means of this time to, you know, say this flat pack needs this version of the same package and this flat pack needs a different version of the same package. If there if you have multiple versions of a package that need to be supported in parallel, they should be separate packages in in the Koji terms. In Fedora, they should be separate, and then you can mix and match like that. But to it is one trade off that we made when giving up modularity is that you don't have quite that flexibility. But generally speaking, we didn't use it, so we can we can pick a version of of something that we're built that we're using for all the flat packs in Fedora for that for that version of Fedora, um, but not for individual flat packs unless they are separate packages. In Fedora, which in that some kind of case maybe they should be, but if there's a specific issue, we'd again I'd love to discuss it in channel and see if we can figure out what needs to be solved here. 